You know, we're out here on Table Rock Lake today and uh, the bite's been pretty tough. So uh, right now, you know, this time of year in the fall, it's October, a lot of, a lot of fish are on, on, on shad. And a really good place to check is gonna be around bridge, bridges and bridge pilings. And as you can see right now, I've got my Lowrance going and I'm idling right past this bridge piling. Um, you know, I look down, this is how I normally set my graphs. I got HDS 12. Um, I keep my side imaging on the bottom, down imaging up here. I always want my sonar. And a lot of people are like, why do you want sonar? Well, one reason is I can see the, the size of those fish. I can make sure they are what they are, you know. And uh, you tell a lot about, you know, the color tint of them. And also you can tell, you know, we're out here in 125 foot and everybody's like, oh my gosh, you, that's, that's too deep to catch a bass. Well, the fish we're catching are suspending under these shad and you can see some right here on the down engine. And they're all the way up to five feet, they're down to 30. So we're going out of this piling right here and I'm gonna be able to tell with my graph what side of the piling they're on, whether they're on the edges, on the front side, in the shade. So uh, let's, let's see what we got right here. That'll clue me in to where, how I want to fish this piling. See right here, we got some, a few fish underneath those shad. I'm just going out right beside it. All right. Let's see if there's any on the back side right here. All right, there's a couple on the back. You know, as I idle across that piling right there, I'm gonna pause my screen. You know, I can go, I can change this and go to my structure. All right, that is a perfect image right there. I can zoom in on the front side of that piling. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six fish. On the back side, I got one fish. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna mark them, them are in 18 foot. There, there's kind of two ways you can approach fishing a piling. Um, you can either throw a swim bait, you can throw a jerk bait, a couple different ways. A lot of time when the water's clear, I like dropping some kind of shad bait, whether it's a small fluke or, you know, something you drop on their head real quick and they'll bite it. So uh, we're gonna idle over here and drop down at about 18 foot and see what we can do. Normally in the fall, you know, you can get on top of these shad balls and, and kind of just follow them around. That's where a lot of the fish are right now but you can drop straight through that shad with any kind of shad bait or uh, even a spoon. See, there's a couple right there under the boat right now. They're going down on it, see how they go down. See if they'll, see if they'll go for it. This right here is just a little fluke style bait. See, we got some schooling out here. That's just a little fluke style bait with a jig head. And that's a owner uh, round type jig head. The best thing about this is it has a, uh, I guess you would say a, a horizontal line tie. You know, the line ties up toward the top of the head. That keeps that bait sitting like this in the water column. You don't want it sitting down like that. You want it just straight, just like a shad. So if you're on a lake and it always has you know, if you got a couple bridges, typically there's a, either a school or two around them. You know, I have seen it where they're, you know, if you have a creek channel or a river ledge, they're hanging out underneath the bridge in the shade, right there in that river ledge. A lot of them just spin on this shade line. There he is. Here he comes. That's a big smallmouth right there. Get in there, big girl. You know, we got four or five pilings right through here on this bridge, and uh, I'm gonna use my Lorances. You know, I'll idle past all these pilings. I'll find which side of the piling they're on. I'll drop down and try to catch a few more of these guys.